Hi everyone and welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kira and I'm the Digital Events Manager at Connecting Up and TechSnoop New Zealand. Connecting Up and TechSnoop New Zealand are part of the Info Exchange Group, a not-for-profit social enterprise that tackles the biggest social challenges through the smart and creative use of technology. For those of you who haven't attended a webinar session with us before, Connecting Up and TechSnoop facilitate an annual trailing calendar of online webinars, workshops, boot camps and webcoms to help the social sector upskill in all things digital. You should check out our training and education menu on our website for more events coming up online. But enough about that. I'm excited to welcome you today to do a case study on how client-centric family services can manage change for better outcomes with Mandy Doon, the co-founder and executive director of CSNet. Mandy is a non-for-profit governance expert and lawyer with over 25 years of experience working in and for human services organizations. Mandy created CSF to bring together innovative technology and good human services practice to solve complex social problems for social impact. Joining Mandy today is Sue Hellier, the CEO of Family Support Newcastle, and Erin Beard, team leader at Family Support Newcastle. Today's webinar will focus on how Family Support Newcastle is solving the challenge of maintaining client-centric support as, as multiple programs. Funding and reporting requirements change over time, how to use data and narrative evidence to understand what's changing for families, and how to embed good practice through the work from ground up. Now, a bit of housekeeping already. All lines are muted, so if you have any technical issues, please type it into the questions box in your webinar panel, and I'll be able to assist you. If you have any questions during the session, please also type it in the question box, and our panel today will answer them in a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. We really encourage you to ask as many questions as you think throughout the session to make this as a dynamic and interactive session as possible. Remember, no question is too silly, but also note your comments and questions will not appear to the entire group. If you are on a Wi-Fi connection and have multiple programs open, this can sometimes affect the quality of your audio video of the webinar. If possible, please close all other programs to help you have the best experience today. Also note that this webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording and the slides will be sent to you as soon as you can after the webinar ends. Before we start, I'd also like to remind you that there's a short survey at the end of the webinar and if you could take the time to complete, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks for attending today and I will hand you over to Mandy, Erin and Sue. Thank you. Thanks, Kiara. Um, hi, Sue and Erin, good to see you. Um, just going to click and make sure that can you see my am I sharing my screen now yes we do have something interesting on the screen though a reminder a reminder yeah um Kiara can you help us with that um yeah I think that's just uh your reminder for the webinar today so you, if you might be able to <laughs> I think it's just a calendar reminder. It's good you showed yeah. up. There we go. Yeah, Perfect. Excellent. All good? Okay. All good. Okay. Off you go. All right. So um, I'm hoping that that is now sharing full screen for my um, my PowerPoint. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good. Everyone see it. Perfect. All right. All right. So um, thanks everyone for joining us. We'll I've just run through the the webinar agenda, and then I'm going to hand over to to Sue and Erin to take us through um, the early slides. So thanks to Kara for the introductions. I'm going to hand over to Sue in a moment for our acknowledgement of country. We're going to start with talking about the context of Family Support Newcastle as a place-based organisation, uh, the purpose, mission, and values of FSN. Um, as being a multi-program, multi-funded organisation and what makes, um, what, what, it, what change looks like over time um, for an organisation like Family Support Newcastle. We're going to touch on a couple of examples of some recent program changes and these are changes uh, both driven by government program changes such as the family preservation uh, reforms and the new uh, system called InfoShare for reporting and also a new program which is initiated by Family Support Newcastle themselves to respond to gaps in support for children and young people impacted by family violence. We're going to touch on um, how Family Support Newcastle do assessments and outcome measurement, 
we're going to look at how CSNet supports Family Support Newcastle through some client-centric views so that you can see client journey um, and how they do program and organisation-wide monitoring uh, through reports. We're going to touch on how to support staff and what works um, during implementation and change uh, to make sure that staff are aware of changes and, and supported during those changes. Um, and then how we work together. Um, and then we're going to come back to some questions and answers and we're looking forward to, to hearing your, your questions and being able to answer those as well. Um, so if I hand over to you, would you like to do our acknowledgement of country? Thank you. Yeah, certainly, Mandy. Um, I'd like to acknowledge um, the land of the Awabakal people. That's where Erin and I are meeting today. And Mandy is meeting on the Yagera and Tuagal people. Um, we want to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge the care that the traditional owners have taken of the land, taken off the land over, the, over many years. We also want to um, state that that land was never ceded and we are uh, grateful for what, for what we were able to um, do, work, live and play on that land. Thanks, Mandy. So Sue, I'll, I'll hand over to you to, to give yeah. us a bit of a background about Family Support Newcastle. Yep, certainly. So Family Support Newcastle has existed for over 40 years, maybe about 42 years now. And over that time we've evolved um, amazingly. So originally it was a smaller organisation, managers supporting uh, women with children. Um, programs were not necessarily well funded. To where we are today, we're funded by Department of Communities and Justice in New South Wales and Department of Social Services federally. We have um, a variety of programs. We have male workers now, which was never thought of for um, programs such as ours in the 70s, 80s, perhaps 90s. So we support families with young children um, and, and men in relationships. We have a, a multitude of programs that I've got to put into in the moment, at the moment in a moment, sorry. Um, but the focus of our work is the safety and wellbeing of children. Uh, and then our values are integrity, justice, diversity and generosity. And they too have evolved over time to, to talk about, to I suppose demonstrate how the work has changed and the focus of the work has changed. So we aim um, to support people, um, children, young people, and their family and community. And we recognise that children and young people live within a broader, valuable family and community network. And our vision is communities that are just, safe, strong and connected, providing opportunities for all families, individuals and children to grow and live well. And I guess our population outcomes are, we want children and young people to be adaptable, happy, capable and healthy, and part of strong, fair and supportive and safe families and communities. And I emphasise that because, again, that's how work has shifted over time, where the focus has been um, generally on the parents um, through to now, more of, much more of a focus on the wellbeing and safety of children. And that's demonstrated in our um, the programs that we that we have. So if you want to go to the next slide, Mandy, and I can talk more about those programs. That move. Sorry. No. Yep, you did, did that. Yeah. yeah, that's it, thank you. So um, I won't read through all of that because you can read that probably better than I can. Um, but you can see through the circle the different types of programs that we have. Um, and I'll tell you which ones of those are new or newish from say 10 years ago. So the Intensive Family Preservation Program, um, our Staying Home Leaving Violence program that's the focus around women being safe in their home of their choice, women and children I should say, um, where they have escaped from escaping domestic violence. Um, and another example is our family skills program, that's point seven there, where the groups we used to run were, um, I guess I could say not evidence-based or evidence-informed, so now having groups that are evidence-informed um, and evidence so, for example, um, tuning into kids, um, shark cage and other fish business, um, and circle of security, just for example. 
Um, and then we have um, the men's work that we do. So we work with dads um, and men around relationships and particularly with men around parenting. And that's quite a substantial shift over time. Um, and we do work within the community. We let the community know what is happening. We promote our programs and um, we understand that the, a safe community is important for families. Um, Mandy, do you want me to talk about that new program yet? Or that's later on in the slot, in the presentation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, all right. Let, let's move on to, and to talk about how you then have to report all of these different um, programs. But let's come come back to that because it's such an important um, initiative that you're now following up yeah. on. But we'll come yeah. back and talk about the, the work around that particular child-focused program. Okay, um, thanks, Mandy. Thanks, Sue. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to add that, you know, we, we have all of these different programs, but essentially um, clients come in through the referral and intake as the central point, and they can then move between the different programs. So with being really client-centred, depending on the best kind of fit for the family, we can actually have clients move throughout the different programs. Um, and so that can also create complexities with reporting. Um, so just moving to this slide that people can see now, we actually have three different um, government reporting systems that we need to report to with a different funding um, stream. And so DEX, which many people will be familiar with, is where we report for our um, TEI funded programs and our FRA funded programs. Um, and then InfoShare is the new kind of um, platform that's being used for intensive um, family preservation and intensive services and SHLV um, and many SHS services are using SIMS um, and so and then there are some programs historically that have used spreadsheets um, and other organisations that still be using spreadsheets for reporting. So obviously there's a level of complexity with having four different reporting um, kind of mechanisms and CSNet has been able to help streamline that so that we can, um, you know, auto upload into the one space. Um, SIMS at the moment, we are having to do duplicate data entry, which adds to the complexity. Um, but again, yeah, CSNet has kind of helped to streamline that reporting process. So if we move to this next slide, um, in terms of how we've partnered with you guys for, since 2016, um, the, the purpose, I suppose, of having a whole of organisation client information and outcomes measurement system is really, as you say, to kind of smooth some of those transitions across programs. You take the program view, but also to smooth and streamline some of the reporting, which you've naturally going to have to deal with when you've got multiple uh, reporting platforms that you need to use and, and uh, reporting aid, government agencies. Um, so, you know, the benefits of being a cloud system and software as a service means that we can make those changes fairly quickly. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about some of the processes that we've used over time to help you transition from um, how those programs um, have developed and, and reporting over time. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add to this that we have, um, we have confidence in the safety and security of the system around, you know, the, the measures that are in place to keep our clients' information secure. Yeah, it's a particular challenge at the moment, isn't it? As, as, yeah. As, organ as information comes into organisations in lots of different ways, um, trying to make sure that all of those, um, all of that information wherever it's sitting is, is secure is definitely oh. something that's really important to organisations and to feel confident that, um, that you're going to be able to manage that confidentiality and privacy uh, around yeah. the information. So in terms of us um, you know, working together, I think we we have a kind of a, an approach to providing support where we have regular catch-ups with each organisation and that's really important for us to, um, as part of our practice and implementation team, to keep on top of it and make sure that we know what it is that's changing for you and, and how we can support you 
Um, so we do it, um, you know, through those regular catch-ups and also just opportunistically when a new program is, is under consideration or there's a change that, that you become aware of, then we, uh, you know, set up a meeting and, and go through that. And that, that works really well. It's, you need to have both of those, I think, in terms of us from our side of CSNet being aware of the changes that are impacting on you and as new thing as new features come through in CSNet, being able to offer those as changes uh, happen as well. Yeah. And I just want to note also the amount of time that was spent in preparation for the program and the go live stage as well, uh, um, the consultation with the organisation and the support to um, bring, it, bring it alive in 2018. <laughs> okay. Um, shall we go to this, you know, a, an example really of one of the recent um, program changes and how we, how we did that, worked that with you. So the family preservation reforms um, around those that group of programs of intensive family preservation, um, intensive family-based services or Brighter Futures, MST CAN, there's a, a bunch of programs that are funded by New South Wales DCJ um, that are aimed around um, the family preservation and reunification uh, reforms that were impacted by moving from a spreadsheet, which was generated by CSNet, and then the spreadsheet would be sent to your funding agency, uh, to the, a new system called InfoShare, which is a new platform that um, DCJ manages. And so the as an example of, of how we kind of work through that change, we needed for Family and the Sport Newcastle to, to bring together, you know, the knowledge about the program and the practice um, and then on our side, we can bring the technical input about going, okay, well, how can we address this and how can we join it up in a way that will streamline the way you have to report, but still give you that holistic view of clients and families that you need in the system. So what we did was we looked at the new, this IFP standing for um, Intensive Family Preservation um, minimum data set to be able to look at what the data set was now, what the data set is going to be um, in future, and then mapping those changes to the other program minimum data sets. So in CSNet, what we try and do is to enable workers to collect the data once, but to use that against a whole range of different programs, which might be the same. It might be that, the, that there's some common data sets um, but it might be that there's some slight differences as well. So what we can do technically is to, to identify what the changes are, to identify what's common, and then be able to map in the back so that technically the worker doesn't even really have to see how the data is then mapped from across the different programs to be able to push into the, the reporting um, system or report that you need to generate out of CSNet. It just means that you're not asking the client the same question four or six times, um, that, the, that the system itself can do the work for you uh, to do that. Um, also this element, I think, around understanding the impact on new, what's new and what's continuing data feels. Because like any organisation, Family Support Newcastle will be wanting to run their reports over history and to actually understand and compare what did that look like over the last financial year and the financial year before that. And um, so it's really important as, as much as we can for us to be able to make sure that the changes will also continue to feed into the historical data so that you can run those uh, reports and join that up over time. One of the things in particular um, uh, parts of the context of, of these, these reforms and changes were, was changing to a new form called the Universal Referral Form. Um, and so looking at some of those fields and identifying what of those fields from the form ought to be put onto the screen so that um, workers are collecting that data from the Universal Referral Form and reflecting that on, on CSNet screen. So we've got a, a combination of data that comes from form. The form itself is uploaded um, 
and workers can see the key information on screen or they can access the, you know, the, um, the save form if they want to look at the further detail around that. Once we kind of got the inputs right, then it was looking at the info share reporting requirements. So there's a particular spreadsheet in a particular format. And so rather than um, workers having to input the data into a spreadsheet, they're just simply putting the data into CSNet in the way that they would do um, in any other program that they're working in, in CSNet. And then there's a report that's automatically generated out of CSNet, which brings out the data that's required for the spreadsheet, makes it land in the right cell, in the right tab, um, to make that part of it streamlined. If there's any errors that um, workers need to address, then they're identified and workers can go back in and um, update the information they need to, and then that report can be, be run again, ready to upload uh, to InfoShare. So we've been testing this for a bit, um, and the first upload was um, for the reporting um, period for last year, 1st of July to the end of December. Um, that form will probably continue to um, adjust a bit, depending on um, DCJ's testing now of the, the live system, and we'll continue to adjust so that the, the form that we need to um, have CSNet generate for the organisation um, will be in the right format, in the right um, way and ready to go when, when the next reporting um, period ends. That's kind of a bit of a summary of, of how that worked in terms of the process. But I guess for any program change, you know, the, those key steps of looking at the new data sets, being able to understand and map common data sets. So there's, a, there's a little, as least amount of um, disruption to the way or workers work and collect the data is really important. Also making sure that the new and continuing data fields will come out in reports so that there's not too much disruption when the organisation also wants to see historical data. And then looking at the, the actual form and format itself, whether or not it's a, an integration that we will do to generate um, a spreadsheet or linking it up to a platform. Mm. I was, Aaron? Yeah, I was just going to say, Mandy, um, you know, for case workers in the field and for clients, you know, obviously you don't want to be spending a lot of time on, on providing data. And there's a lot of data required um, for this program in particular, data that you first met with families, each session that you had, what type of activity you were providing or support you were providing. And so for the family worker or the case worker to be able to come back from a visit, and just enter their case notes and data without thinking about all of the minimum data sets and see us not being able to work out the key dates and service type um, and provide all of that means that um, staff are having much less, um, you know, having to put much less thought into their data and can focus more on the casework with clients. Yeah. Um, just as a kind of a diagrammatic way of describing what we've been talking about is that CSNet here in the middle can run the spreadsheet directly from CSNet, then it's ready to upload uh, to InfoShare. The referrals will continue to come from Child Story um, in, in the universal referral form or whatever format that is, and then that's inputted directly to CSNet. I think one of the I wanted to just kind of um, identify is that there's always opportunities for us to streamline these processes and as much as we can and Family Support Newcastle um, you know was part of the trial of, of thinking about how moving from the one way of reporting the program to, to another and the kind of efficiencies that you could achieve wow. through that because it's something that's really important as Erin says workers don't really want to collect more and more information and more data they want to think about the work that they're doing and how the collection of that of those records help them um, to provide the best services. So um, future technical options, you know, we as much as we can, we will build integrations. It's, we've built eight or nine different integrations now um, in order to streamline the, 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 the information come out of CSNet and go to the reporting platform. Um, in terms of child story to, to CSNet, 
we know at the moment that those um, those referrals will come to organisations via email. CSNet's built an inter, a, a kind of integration that organisations can use themselves, and at the moment this is in two forms. So if, for instance, you have a contact us form on your website, the organisation's website, or there's a uh, an intake or a registration or a, um, a referral form that's on your website, then CSNet has built the link so it will come directly from the website straight into CSNet. So it's not sitting somewhere else um, linked to your website, it'll come straight into CSNet and from there it will trigger the intake process. So it becomes quite a streamlined way of doing that. Now that's great if you can get people to fill out the form that's on your website. But of course, what we know is that organisations still receive a lot of referrals via email. So the second part of this work that we're doing in this new feature will be for when organisations receive an email with a PDF uh, referral or the referral information on it, that CSNet will use the same um, feature to then convert that PDF form or information into, um, into fields that then also will kickstart the intake. Um, process. So it just means looking for those opportunities um, where we can help organisations to, to take something which is pretty time consuming and also you want to be able to see that information really accurately and in a really timely way. So you don't want that information sitting in emails, you want it coming into your system and for those, um, those people who are you know, involved in the intake and eligibility assessment kind of process to be able to do that from one place some of the um, changes that we see coming up. Um, so this is the, the area that um, I think is so interesting where um, Family Support Newcastle has identified a gap in the types of uh, support that you're providing for children and young people. I'm really keen for you to talk about that. Yeah, thanks Mandy. So we've been working with, um, as I said earlier, with women um, and children who have experienced family, domestic and family violence for quite some years now and how over time the focus shifted from um, being on the woman to being on the woman, uh, the parent and children, the mum and children, to realising that for those children there was very little way in the um, way of support for those children. They were sort of tacked onto things or maybe not even talked about or looked at. Um, and we know that those children certainly struggle in many ways and there's the risk then of um, generational violence, uh, experiencing that or perpetrating. So what um, I was able to do was I guess, firstly identify that and then work out how we would fund a program that provided trauma-informed support to the children of the families where there has been domestic and family violence. And part of um, having that funding was we're able to get some through staying home leaving violence, so our existing um, domestic and family violence program for, for women, women and children, plus we had staff changes in the background in our um, admin sections and what um, we did when, when those staff changes happened was outsource some of our programs around IT and around finance. So that gave us some more money to do more of what we would like to do in the organisation and that was how we funded this new program um, through the Staying Home Leaving Violence and through our own funding. Um, and so we took some time to recruit just the right person to be able to have the skills and the understanding around what's needed to support children. And so recently we appointed someone to that role who has had some experience in out of home care amongst much other, many other types of experience. So um, as Mandy said, it was co-funded. Then we worked um, to think about what do we want to, what information and data do we want to collect to have the evidence that we're making a difference. So we um, met with Mandy around that. We've talked as um, an organisation, we've developed um, a program logic and also have a relationship with Newcastle Uni. Um, from a professor of psychology who is very interested in what we're doing here and um, working with us around collecting the information uh, that we need. Um, so that's, I suppose that's the, the summary of that. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. 
Yeah, it's a really great example where you're able to review the data of what you are doing and being able yeah. to identify these gaps and patterns over time um, yeah. and initiate um, a new program yourself using the data um, and be able to say, and if we do this work, this is our theory of what will change um, oh. and we'll use use the data and reporting to be able to, to show what's being achieved. So yes. Yeah, really what, I, what I committed to say there, Mandy, was um, with staying home leaving violence, there was, we were required to provide some support to children, but it was, there was no clarity around what the support looked like, nor whether there any measures in place. So that helped us um, really consider this more as well. And as you say, around the data. Yeah. And the assessment tools too, hey Sue, in oh, yeah. terms of what, what assessment tools you, you, you'll you use, which are um, appropriate for children and young people. Yes, yes. So that's that's quite a bit more background work that we're doing when we're doing also some uh, project around hearing the voices of children, which fits in with this, but also, also other work we're doing in the organisation. Yeah, fantastic. Um, kind of leads us on to the next thing around um, assessments and outcomes and how you know there, there's the need to record the work so that you can see all of that in terms of what work you are doing and with whom and be able to um, understand that and also then alongside um, in CSN to be able to use the measurement instruments um, that are useful to you. Um, and so Erin, can I hand you over to you to talk, to you to talk about some of the work that Family Support Newcastle is doing around this area? Yeah, so I mean, obviously different funders have different requirements in terms of measurements that we're using. So, you know, there's SCORE in DSS, IFPs using the strengths and stresses. Um, and historically, we have used pre and post surveys to gather data for our, our own organisation as well as for funders. What we kind of realised over time, um, as lots of people would know with pre and post, is that it can actually lead to looking like your work has a negative impact on families because when families initially um, are working with you, they might not have the relationship to be able to be, um, you know, honest about what's happening for them and the challenges, or they might just not recognise the challenges. By the time you reach the end of the work and you have the relationship and maybe some change, people might actually rate themselves a lot more. It looks like you're made a negative impact. So we've reviewed that in kind of the way that we do pre and post and the ability of CSNet to have a kind of narrative or story that we can sit alongside the tool to actually explain the rationale behind that, what looks like a negative change has been really um, important. And we've been able to incorporate questions like how worried was the family about Jay's involvement when they did the pre-survey, for example. Um, so I think we've been able to really look at how do we use the measurement tools as a meaningful part of the work to actually provide a real measure of change, um, but also make it something that is beneficial for families and workers in reviewing the work that's been done and how do we actually document the narrative that's behind the tool or the, or the assessment. Yeah, it's a fantastic example of how it, it is so important to have the numbers and the narrative alongside mm. to actually understand what's going on um, and to be able to across the different programs use different instruments too you know measurement tools which are relevant to the particular you know the particular um, families or children that you're working with um, and I can see you know in in terms of what you do in family support Newcastle you do use some measurement instruments in some programs and not others, um, but also you've got you know the, those standard things around client feedback, which you might actually want to have as a client um, common client survey across all programs. So yeah. it means that if you're running the reports, you know you'll be able to be really program specific if that instrument is relevant to that particular program and um, cohort you're working with. But on the other hand, if you want to see something which is across all programs and see the common patterns across all programs, whole organisation, um, you can set it up with CSNET to do that as well. Um, should we just touch on some of the some of the ways that you can kind of you can tell from one way you talk about this work, it's constantly going down into the detail, isn't it? 
and then kind of trying to come back up and have a uh, you know a program and an organisation wide view of things and um, it's that's the part that those two getting those two things um, together is is really important to be able to see it all at all those different levels um, and monitoring the nature of the um, the records that you're collecting um, making sure that people are putting the data in. All of those things are really important to be able to, to do that across all the programs and, and organisation wide. Mm -hmm. um, in, in CSNet, one of the things that, that organisations say to us, which is just so critical, is to be able to search and find clients quickly. Um, and if your data is in multiple silo databases, that's a really hard thing to do. You can't find the client quickly and you don't know if that client is the same Mary Smith in, in this database as, as she is. Mary Smith in another database. So being able to have a single client record but show that the client is participating in multiple programs, um, whether it's cases and groups over time, is really important. Um, and one of the features that CSNet has is called a client history tab, um, where you can actually see the support and the client journey across all programs over time. Now they're permission based, so it means that if I don't have the permission to see a particular um, program because it's it's locked down due to privacy and confidentiality um, concerns, then then that also will skinny up the the view. Um, but I thought I just I just show you a little example here. So this is an example of the CSNet. Um, this is dummy data. It's in our um, demo site. Um, it's an example of how of this, the client history screen. So you would be in a case, this in this particular instance, it's the child, youth and family services case, this is the dummy activity type, um, where I've chosen to see Lily Lapsong, who's my client, and I want to see everything that Lily has participated in over time, and I can choose the date range that I look at this by. Um, I can see on the 9th of May, she was in a meeting here um, in child and family services, and if I click row I can also see the notes that I've taken um, on that appointment. The next row underneath that you can see on the 21st of April that she's participated in a staying healthy group and then the one below that on the 1st of April. So it's an example of how even though people are participating across multiple programs and activity types, cases, groups, um, to be able to see that journey on screen is really helpful. Um, and then also run a report which is called the client sessions history and it's also used for um, if you need to run a subpoena report where when you click on the reports tab you, you find this and it brings out like a report version of what the client history um, screen looks like. Once again it's linked to um, security permission. I was also just going to show you a couple of other reports at organisational level. This one is um, really a, a snapshot of the activities that you're running, the programs that, that um, they're called, total client numbers, adult numbers, child numbers, family numbers, uh, contact count, meaning um, face, face to face or um, email, whatever contact um, method that is, the numbers of sessions and also time. So you'll see down there you've got the activity type on the left. This is um, once again out of a dummy uh, demo site or dummy data where you've got a program in the middle and each of these rows is counting the number of clients that have participated and how many sessions they've participated in, the amount of time um, that has been spent in those um, activities by these cases and then by groups. One of the other reports, of course, is really, really important is around demographics. Um, and these are looking, this one's just an example of choosing a demographic feature, uh, Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, and, and client responses to that. Um, so that you can choose across, either for an individual program or across all programs what that data looks like. You have a graph there. Um, and the last one I just wanted to show you was um, outcome indicators change. So um, as Erin mentioned, you know, your Family Support Newcastle uses a number of different measurement tools. 
what you want to see is change. So this is an example where I've, I've used the, the K10 to run the K10 questions. And for each of these rows, it's showing an aggregated view of every single client that's filled out a K10 across any case or any group that you've run. Um, and whether or not in that indicator about how often do you feel tired out for no good reason, three clients showed an increase over time, zero, no change, and three, a decrease, and that's a total of six. So this is an example of, an, um, of a report where it, by each of the questions, it's showing change over time, and you can do that across every client and every program. Um, Shall we go to staff support for change? Sure. So, well, I just want to say, um, Mandy, um, that I noticed, uh, you know, my use of CS network different from the um, case workers, for example, and yet I'm still yeah. able to find what I need, um, you know, whether I get a request for a subpoena or I need to know what's happening, uh, like I can access it and um, it meets my needs as well. Yes, and, and you, the point that you, you're raising is really important, which is depending on what your role is in the organisation, you're going to need different kinds of reports um, mm. and be more important to you than, than um, other people in, in different roles. Yeah. So the reports are permission-based, which means yeah. that, um, you know, depending on what your role is as team leader or program manager, you might want to see, um, you know, worker overview reports as mm. well, as well as client and across programs. Yeah. Um, just going to go back here now to our slide around some staff support for change. So internally, um, Sue and Erin, do you want to talk a bit about how you support staff to, to, to manage and respond to these changes? Yeah, so I mean I suppose we've tried to keep, um, we've really tried to help motivate staff and support staff to see that data, collecting data and good case notes is part of the practice. It's part of providing a good service to families. So it's important that we invest the time in, in doing that as well. Um, so we have CSNet as an agenda topic in our business meetings that we have monthly and in our leaders meetings weekly so that we can actually um, ask people, how is this going? Do you have questions, feedback, things that need changing? Um, uh, as you can see on the slide, we've also got a test site. So if, if staff don't feel confident or there's new changes, we can go in and put dummy data into the test site and play with that. Um, we can then communicate with CSNet about our readiness for that to go live into the, into the real database. Um, we do weekly updates to staff after our um, meetings as leaders. And if there's changes to CSNet on new information, Sue will include that in her update to all staff that are receiving that. Um, when we have team meetings, we'll go through CSNet if there's been a change. So IFP's meetings tomorrow and our plan is to sit down and review what are the minimum concepts that have been sent up from CSNet, just so that staff are aware of the interplay between CSNet and InfoShare as well. Um, so I suppose it's really about keeping it on the agenda, keeping staff aware of changes, they're often very minimal changes, but letting them know that that's still important to the data that we're collecting. Um, and I guess helping people to see that ultimately this data is also benefiting the client work that they're doing, so making that link really clear. And in the early stages, we did have a regular newsletter, CSNet newsletter that would go out to staff, letting them know um, you know how the process was going, when it was going to go live um, and that sort of thing. Thanks, Sue. Um, in terms of how we work together, I think there's really good examples of, of us being able to work together across the different organisations and, and communicate that really well. And to be able to help workers as, as much as we can to reduce the amount of disruption in the way that they do their work, to find those common things that we can across the different programs and to smooth that out as best we can. And also to make sure that we're able to join what's new to the, um, the historical data. Because mm. this, this work doesn't happen overnight, it takes time. And you, you know, for you to be able to see the patterns, you do need to be able to see it historically. 
um, I think that's really all I was going to mention. Um, Sue or Erin, is there anything else you want to mention before we go to see whether there's any questions that people have? Um, no, I don't. I don't think I have anything else to add. No, I just suppose in terms of how we work together, what I would say is, um, you know, we've moved from historically a really old database, oh, we yes. tried to develop ourselves as an organisation, mm. which was very difficult to navigate and very difficult to get support in using. Um, but it feels like with CSNet, I'm always able to make contact with someone at CSNet or Mandy, you know, you yourself, um, if I'm not sure of something or, um, you know, I need support in, in supporting staff to use the system. So I think that that kind of personal approach and knowing who to go to and such responsiveness has made a real difference in how user-friendly the whole system is. Yeah, I'd second that. Yep. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Sue. So, Kiara, should I hand back to you now to see if there are some questions? Yes. Great webinar, guys. Lots of interesting stuff there, great tactics. Um, yeah, so anyone that's here today has any questions for Sue, Mandy, or Erin, if you want to type your questions into the questions box, I'll be able to read them out to the panel. I'll give people a few minutes to figure out where all those questions are. Remember, as I said, no questions too silly. Ask away whatever you have. I'll give them a few minutes. That's why we're waiting for people if they have any questions. I should mention, Sue, your next week at the Family Support, uh, Family Relationship Services um, yeah. conference, doing a doing a session on the uh, the new program that you're running, which be, is going to be great. It's yeah. more of an opportunity really to dig into the detail of that as well, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And um, just talk about you know how it developed um, and. And even though it isn't formally funded by, um, a, you know, one particular funding stream, we still hold ourselves very accountable to that and put in the, the systems that we would put in normally anyway. Um, and, and it's an opportunity to do more, as I said, with our partnership with the university, for example. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And you, Mandy, you're at our Connecting Up conference. When are you there? When, where, where were you based? Yeah, so uh, the conference is on Thursday and Friday this week yep. in Melbourne. So that's going to be a great opportunity. Um, it's a great program at Connecting Up. Well done to you guys for, for putting it on each year. Um, and it's lovely to see people face to face. You know, we do a lot of this kind of thing. Um, but it is nice to, to see people face to face. So, yes, if you're in Melbourne and coming to the Connecting Up conference, please drop in and say good day. We'll have a, a booth there. Um, and we're also sponsoring um, the First Nations Technology uh, Award on the at the Not for Profit Awards on Thursday night, which is always a, a great opportunity to to celebrate some great work that people are doing and have done over the last 12 months too. Yep. All right. We have a question from Nikki, and Nikki would like to know. Who do we contact to get started with CSNet? We are in New Zealand. It is, is it available here? Hi, Nikki. Um, thank you for, for reaching out. Absolutely, you can get in touch with um, me if you we want to have a chat. And yes, um, we have an organisation um, who is who actually, uh, their, all of their work is across Australia and New Zealand and across Asia Pacific. So, it's an example of an organisation where it really doesn't matter where you are, um, that we can support that. Um, it's one of the benefits of being software as a service, that you can support organisations wherever they do their work. So, yes, definitely get in touch with me. I'm, if my email, if you LinkedIn, that would be awesome and I'll definitely follow up with you. So. What I'll, what I'll do as well um, after the webinar today, um, when I get all the recordings downloaded, um, I'll include the slide that you sent me, Mandy, um, and I can include uh, your email address if that's okay in that email, and that will go to everyone that attended today that wants to get in contact with you. Yep. Uh, has anyone else got any questions today? Everyone's quiet for a Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. 
I think that is it, guys. I don't think we have any more questions. Okay. So we covered right. everything. <laughs> yeah, good. That's always a good sign. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming along today. It's been great to hear the case study and hear more about what you guys are doing, what, what plans you have for the future. And uh, yeah, as you guys said, your whereabouts is the conference that you're at, Sue? Yeah, um, yeah it's next week in on the Gold Coast, sadly. Oh, sadly, the weather is probably off. There. I think it's better for you, Sue. I really hope that. And thank yeah. you so much, and we really love working with you, and we really appreciate you sharing your knowledge around this because it's really valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mandy. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Come along. See you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Bye -bye.